In this lesson, I want to focus in on how to make a form disappear if we're going to be continuing to work with it, meaning we don't want it to have to display every single time that we rerun our code like I did here in the past. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the two uh, if and then the empty conditions that I have here. So I'll go ahead and delete that from my code. If you've been following along in the code, then you would have had that in there. And now I also want to focus in on, I'm just going to remove those font tags that I had here where we turn the asterisks as red. Go ahead and remove those just to simplify our code a little bit so that way um, it's a little easier to understand without having so much code laying around all over on our page. So now I've got it back to a basic structure. I have my form here and then the only thing I have here is a condition that says if the post button has been pressed or is set then we're going to run code within this conditional statement here. So we kind of simplified our code quite a bit. What I want to do is I'm going to use a variable that's going to be a Boolean variable data type that's going to tell us to or determine whether or not we're going to display our form. So what I'll do is I'll space that line down and here on line 6 I'll go ahead and create that variable. Let's just call it display form and I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to true. And so this is a Boolean so I don't put quotes around the word true and you'll notice it's a key word and mine turned blue for it because it's either going to be true or false. So there are only two possibilities for this one. And now if the submit button is pressed, what I want to happen is I want the form to disappear. So what we're going to say is we'll, we'll change that display form to a false value. So I'll just put in there false as my keyword. So now I can manipulate it, either true or false, depending on whether or not the button has been pressed. Meaning by default it's true. If I press the button it's going to be false. So let's go ahead and after this is set um, condition that we've got right here, let's go ahead and within my if statement, let's create another if statement here that's going to basically say if, and then we're going to go ahead and put in there display form, dollar sign display form. Since this is a Boolean data type that's going to return true or false, I don't have to say that it's equal to true or is equal to false. Um, it's going to return back a true or false automatically, so I can actually just keep this within parentheses for my if statement and save myself a little bit of code writing just by displaying this and what, what's going to end up happening meaning if this display form is true we'll run our if condition if it's false we will not run the if condition so I'll go ahead and put some curly braces here for this statement and now what we'll need to do is we're going to move this form into the if statement now if you've been following along I told you we cannot put a form within the PHP code and that is still true and you'll see how we'll do the workaround here I'm going to copy my entire form that I have here and I'll just go ahead and cut it and I'm going to paste it within this if statement. Alright, so there's my entire form. Now what we'll need to do is we actually need to quit the PHP code or close out our PHP code or put a closing delimiter tag there within my code. So let's go ahead and I'll put the question mark and then the greater than symbol and then at the very end of my form what I'll need to do is start back up the PHP code. So we'll put a less than symbol, the question mark, and then PHP. And so kind of what happens here is if our PHP code is running, what's going to happen when it comes to this particular condition, if it's true, it will stop PHP. So the PHP will end here, and then it will start working automatically within the HTML itself, which is going to be my HTML tags. Once the form has been created at the very end of my form tag, I will then begin the PHP uh, block of code again. So it's kind of like a just a tapped into our PHP code itself and put in a break for just HTML by stopping it and then opening it back up again. So let me go ahead and hit save and let's go ahead and refresh our page here. I may have to close the page yeah, because the submit button has already been pressed. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. I'm going to reopen the page like it's a brand new page. We'll go over to my local host where I have the page. There it is, lessons page. Oh, there it is. So now that my page is loaded up, it, what appears to be the first time, I have the form that's actually loaded here. And the form is going to come now from within this conditional statement here, which means by default we're just saying to display the form and the value for display form is true. So my form shows up. Let's go ahead and type in uh, just my name. And then we're going to go ahead now and type in about, this is about me, and I'll hit go, and you'll notice the form disappears. And the reason why the form disappears is because when the page reloaded, even though we started off again with it being true, the post button has been submitted, so we're going to now go ahead and it's going to be false. It's going to go ahead and my code is going to turn it to being false. 
because the there is post information within the post array basically that says that the submit button has been selected. So from this point on in my code, when it comes down to the next part of this and it says if display form, well that's going to return a false, which means the form itself will not be displayed. It's going to go to the end of my code, which will be right there for this conditional statement. And then that ends my PHP code. Now if you wanted to, we could also do something like echoing out the information. And so let's just go ahead and say echo. I'll go ahead and put in there the dollar sign underscore post and then what I'll use here is the square brackets single quotes and then what I want in here is going to be we'll just go ahead and echo out the F name value and then I'll end that with a semicolon and I'll go ahead and hit save what I'll do is refresh my page and alright so where's our error at here echo dollar sign post F name that looks okay post in line 9 so I still have an error within my code alright I think I found my error here it might be the, it's the post so let me it's got to be all capital letters here there we go dollar sign post let me hit refresh retry and there's my name so make sure when you're using the uh, underscore post here for this our global array that you use all capital letters because that's the syntax for that particular variable so now that I've got that set I can see that I've got my name displayed so let's just go ahead and say I open up another tab within my browser and I'm going to go ahead and go back to where my page is located localhost it's within my server itself let me go to lessons page one alright so you'll see that when we first go to the page within this tab it treats it as a whole different instance of seeing this page you'll see that I've got my form displayed again so I'll just type something in the first name I'll just actually just type hello and if I hit go you'll see that now hello is displayed and the form has disappeared so we've accomplished the tasks that we were set out for within this video